Titans. How about? Okay, that's not going to be jarring for anyone at home. <laughs> um, so in the interim, and I just want to say this because I, I got nothing but uh, love for my family. Uh, Seth, I I hate to 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 stop our young blood uh, conversation dead in its tracks real quick, but um, I got to show love where love is due. Since you and I were talking, my sister is on her way to the hospital, about to give birth to my nephew. So congratulations to my sister. Congrats. Yeah, you'll never listen to this fucking podcast ever. But on the off chance that you do, just <laughs> know. Like that, my sister. Yeah, that I acknowledge. Or anything I do. <laughs> that I acknowledge that uh, Brooks is on the way. In fact, I was just uh, joking with my brother-in-law i was like where the fuck did the name brooks come from i was like did you guys not like done and he didn't nah. he didn't get he didn't get that joke but i wish he did actually what our he best to her <laughs> yeah. what he said was actually no we're just a big fan of the running shoe <laughs> It's like you're a fucking idiot, dude. It'll be fast. <laughs> yeah, I no, he won't. These kids don't exercise. What are you fucking kidding me? Anyway, it's fast on a screen. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I think somewhere in here we were talking about uh, uh we we oh, so eating birthday the continuation cake. <laughs> the definitive uh as you say, definitive young review, which I'm honored to be a part of. Uh so we left it off at the uh young the Rick Moranis cousin getting thrown into the cake. So Next, we have them kind of getting out of there because they they caused this dust up and now they have kind of like the heartfelt conversation where uh, Jesse talks about her dad and then Dean talks about his hopes and dreams. Well done, concise, to the point. The only thing that's kind of like, eh, where it's like, that's so trite. And I won't say this a lot about the writing here because as noted, I'm I love this movie. So again, anything I say about it, to the contrary is out of love much like my movie my favorite one of my favorite movies in the world is breaking which is fucking awful i love it it's so heartfelt and the dancing is beautiful but it's a really bad movie but i it's one of my favorites and it's not bad it's passionate yeah. i don't know that's to the side so this is where the 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 tritonus comes in where they talk about their family and their background, their hopes and dreams. And then it gets to the point where I think she says, or he brings it up like, well, oh, she, she probably inquires, what about your mom? And then, and this is a great acting job by uh, Rob Lowe across the board in the scene. He's just playing straight, kind of dramatic, not over the top, um, hysterical or upset, which is where I think he kind of loses his, his acumen. Um, but he says she, she wasn't around. I guess she got tired of the farm too. Just kind of like a nice, it's sad because a, a young man wants to have a mother figure and a mother around and he's not, he's not angry about it. He doesn't have anger. Like, you know, like the bitch left us. So it's not like that. It's just played where it's like, it's sad, but I've accepted it. Just like it, it, it's a strong, he's immature, this character, but he's strong. And I like that moment where he says, yeah, she left. And I'm sure he's hurting about it, but it doesn't come off as he's unhealthy about it or not no. to say that. No, in fact, I think he exercises uh, with his acting a level of concern more so for his dad um, and how right. he coped with it as opposed yes. to his mom actually leaving. Like he was more like, ah, my dad took it hard, but you know, me and my brother, we just kind of like got used to it. For, further adding to kind of like the, 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 solidifying this character as being like an upstanding kind of guy it's like you're dealing with adversity in your life and you're doing your best and you kind of like have the empathy for your for the parent that is not handling it as well which further may we, we could posit that's partly why the father is more kind of um you know brooding and, and like uh, protective than he would be otherwise with with a partner with him to kind of balance out the parental duties when when Rob Lowe wants to leave home he may be more so inclined to we might be reading too much into this but this is what I do <laughs> this is how I perceive art I'm sorry like I read into everything I pay attention to everything this, this review is gonna be 10 hours clearly we pay attention to the minutia in movies but anyway so th this is the point I'll get to the point so at that moment she says I'm gonna fuck this guy because she, you could see that she feels that his mother's gone. She comes over and is affectionate with him, stepping in for the mother. Again, these are high school kids. I don't need to see this evolution, but I'm seeing it. So you take this heartfelt, nice moment and you pervertify it by basically turning on the sex machine. And now we kind of like flash cut to them going to Rob Lowe's brothel and going up the stairs and going into his room 
and they proceed to have, I mean, underage sex yeah. in a mainstream. You know what, though? Let's I mean, let's make it a little bit easier for the audience. Let's just right, say a right. seventeen year. Harsh. No, no, not at all. What I'm going to say is put and put it in a different light for the audience. A seventeen year old in the '80s is much older than a seventeen year old in 2022. Let's just be real. In fact, you got parents that are coming home from war. You talk about reading too deep into something but you, you know you, there, there was a much different upbringing and you were forced to be a lot more mature and grown in that era so I, I i don't know that it lessens the the visuals of high school sex however we it do awkward yeah. even though they're clearly in their 20s so you know this, right. there's nothing wrong here this this in reality these are these are adults but it, 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 but what we can what we can say is is that if that's a little too much for you, at least we have a comedic element going here because as this is going on, it's simultaneously cut with Miss McGill making some tea and ice cream, which I didn't know that that was a thing. Like you, you have ice cream and then hot tea. I didn't, I didn't know that that was a thing. But apparently, it is a thing, at least in Miss McGill's world. And she essentially walks in on the high schoolers, as it were, uh, you know, making love. And she leave and what a what a great lady. She leaves the tea and the ice cream. She lingers that. a bit too I'll, long. I'll be, <laughs> she does, she does Get linger. Out, woman. There's clearly more than one person in that bed. You don't need to kind of like helicopter over it and say, like, who's fucking my dean? You know, just well, no, I think what it happened was she wanted an invite, Seth. That's what I, uh, I, I that is, <laughs> let's 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 make it very weird. That would now, fit. It with this movie but 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 not not again not to get into the weeds on every scene as we're doing in this 10 hour review but like so i don't know you probably noticed this what what so to me okay <clears throat> i don't need to see sex in movies i just don't like in this day and age and i'm no prude okay in this day and age there is anything you want online you can go find it okay so i don't need to see softcore porn in mainstream media i just i, I i'm watching a hockey movie i don't need to see a sex scene but again i i would believe this is the producer influence of like yeah you need to get some hot sex in there you know for we we need uh because this isn't the love story i think the love story is a scene the 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 predecessor where they open up about their hopes and dreams as mentioned and they have a really nice moment you could have just left it there and and like you can assume that they may consummate the relationship beyond that um but 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 these producers, you know, you, you got to show it. I need to see them unbuttoning Rob Lowe's jeans. We got this hunk in the movie. I need to see his jeans being unbuttoned. I need to see them slowly undressing each other and awkwardly standing, staring, and, and taking each other in. I don't, I'm, it turns into a bad romance novel. It's a hockey movie. Yeah. I don't need it. And, and so, so, I'm sorry, the point, not to get too down this rabbit hole. You're saying like, you didn't like her red long johns as they were standing there far too weird. long staring at each other? You didn't so like it, It's like watching somebody's first time. It's really uncomfortable. I really don't need to see it. But so so they intercut the, the one saving grace here. And maybe this was a director or somebody saying, like, we need to break this shit up because it's so awkward watching, like, two young people's first sexual encounter. I I. I don't want that. I have my own awkwardness I'm dealing with. I don't need to relive it. So basically, at least they intercut it with Miss McGill getting ready to take advantage of young Dean herself. Like, where is this movie going? But at least they mix it up and they they, they cut away from the first timers with the, I guess, experienced older woman preparing like the sex snacks. And, 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 and the, the other thing, probably one of my least favorite moments about this movie, not only when she decides to sleep with him when he reveals that his mom's not there. It's like, that's like a little heavy handed, but when he is basically orgasming, they cut to a shot of Miss McGill placing a cherry on the Sunday, which I'm imagining is like a none, like not subtle way of saying that he lost his virginity with somebody other than an older woman, 17 year old <laughs> hockey player. So all kinds of, dysfunction and malaise happening during this scene. I just wish they they just didn't include it. Thank yeah. you, producer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you very thank you. We need we need a we need a hot sex scene with the hunk. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and and you know what? We did get it. Mm. And 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 if, anyway. and if the sex scene wasn't uh, good enough for you, they they pour water all over themselves at the end. That, so that I think was I, I, that that moment I kind of like because he's a hockey player, he's got a water bottle. Like that's kind of like that's kind of nice. Like I'm nice it's 
it's just it's like a sweet moment in an otherwise repulsive scene and not not that the actors did anything wrong they're good looking actors again it's just in context in a hockey movie unnecessary especially for what this particular hockey movie is like i, I don't know i guess if you wanted to do that in blades of glory that's fine in fact i think that whole scene sense. works in blades of glory in that totally. context then uh you know but so anyway anyway after we uh after we have sex it's playoffs time we, <laughs> we gotta go we gotta You're go supposed to <laughs> abstain from having sex around the playoffs right i mean like that, he's doing all kinds of things wrong that's right if bull durham taught us anything you you never have sex on a streak right. seth you never you don't you don't, you don't you don't do that you don't do that yeah. by the way uh if anybody cared i think i don't know I think Bull Durham is my favorite sports movie of all time. I don't know. I don't. It, that's, it's, it's my hard. second favorite baseball movie. Absolutely. Uh, to what? I got to know. Mr. HBO's, baseball. HBO's original movie, Long Gone with William C. William C. Peterson is by far my favorite baseball movie of all time. Damn, dude. You just blew my mind. What's it called again? So it's called Long Gone. It's with William C. Peterson as a little similar to Bull Durham. William C. Peterson is a great actor. I loved him in To Live and Die in L.A. He's just outstanding. Um, he plays a minor league lifer who's the manager of the Tampico Stogies, and he's trying to win the minor league championship while getting called up to the St. Louis Cardinals because he's got some friends in the organization. He really wants to make the bigs. Meanwhile, he's kind of like driving this kind of ragtag team of, um, some underachievers with some star power to, uh, the, the top of their local mountain, whatever their Florida league is. Um, and it's basically a story about him and this young up and comer who's played by, I never get his name right, Dermot Mulroney. Like, how do you pronounce that guy's name? Whatever that guy is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who plays a, who plays a hot young, uh, hot meaning like in sports, like a hot young second baseman prospect who's trying to learn the ropes. Similar to Young Blood, where the Patrick Swayze is the elder statesman and Rob Lowe is like the up and comer. So, Similar. I guess I got a fucking new movie that I need to watch because I I've never even heard of that. In fact, when you were like HBO's, I thought you were gonna say sixty one, and I was like, oh well, nope, that's not it at all. Um, I, I I will actually uh, I'll send you a link at some point because right now it's impossible to find, but somebody uh, uh, thankfully uploaded it in full to YouTube, so you can find it for free right now as long as YouTube allows hey. it to be hosted. Oh yeah, definitely. So, I would totally yeah. check that out. Yeah, um, great movie. Very, few people know about it, but by far, by far, my I'm movie. I'm actually kind of embarrassed that live on the air, I was like, I don't know about the movie. That's a the under the radar first first sports movie ever on the Ella Cinema uh, Cinema podcast, and first time ever, I was like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so. Yeah, it very. I kind of grew up on HBO, so a lot of what was on HBO was what I ended up watching. I grew up on HBO and ba and basically VHS rentals. So whatever my parents brought home. So when I was like eight, nine, 10, 11, I was watching R-rated movies, Beverly Hills Cop, Fletch. I don't know if Fletch was R, but like, yeah, I, I grew up fast when it came to my taste in movies. So I was I was watching Young Blood, this movie when I was ten. So there you go. Um, First anyway. rated R movie I ever saw, True Lies. I know that's crazy. My parents kept everything kept everything PG until mm. ninety four, and then the American action classic True Lies. Ah, uh, we're at playoffs, Seth. We're in the playoffs yep. now. There we go. Yep. And uh, you know we're we're coming off a, uh, a oh be, what, sorry be, not to not to make this ten hour you twenty no, hours no, no, but no. before we get before we get to the playoffs we have probably my favorite scene in the movie where after the uh, sex scene Rob Lowe goes to Patrick Swayze's place so and as an aside I read I'm not sure if this is true because you shouldn't believe everything you don't believe on the internet but um, I, I read somewhere that that Patrick Swayze had a love interest in the movie but her scenes were cut out which is unfortunate because as a huge fan of this movie I would love to see any deleted scenes and see his relationship because he has none he does mention that he once hit on Jesse I guess but that's about it and he's just kind of focused on making the pros and you know hanging out with groupies at the uh at, at the bar but um so you have a scene where they basically bond they they consummate consummate their relationship you know that i really feel like two you know, sex like, scenes back to back platon platonically you know i i, I really think that the, the better love story in this movie is rob Lowe and patrick swayze like that much like in point break it's patrick swayze and keanu reeves it's the bromance to me is the more interesting love story in in this movie um, than I 
I mean, I know why they have Jesse Chadwick in the movie to to have like the hot young guy, have a hot young girl, like fine, whatever, whatever you think, feel you need Hollywood, unnecessary. It doesn't really add much, even though I think she does a good job. But in this scene, a couple of things are achieved. You start to see Derek taking uh, Rob Lowe under his wing because he says, you've got stitches, we got to take him out. Why? Because you're going to a rough place and they'll try and bust you open again. So he's kind of like taking him under his wing. He gives him the puck back that Rob Lowe threw out when he was pouting over being benched, you know? And, and what's funny is Patrick Swayze, he puts it on the floor. He says, I think this is yours. And Rob Lowe takes it and shoots it away. And he, so like, I hope he got it before he left Patrick Swayze's place, you dick. <laughs> Did you just throw it out again? Because he, he hits the, uh, the goal. He, he scores a goal in the, the upper right or something like that. It's actually a really good shot. But um, so I think one of the best moments in the movie is when they're sitting down they have a couple brews, they hit a couple slap shots, and they sit and they talk about life. And you get a real deep insight into Patrick Swayze's character in that this is the first time that you really see him let his guard down. Because up until this scene, he's all bravado and machismo, and he's, like, he's alpha male, confident. He doesn't have any chinks in his armor. And he says at one point to, to Dean, you know, I'm not going to be a doctor or a lawyer. I didn't even finish high school. And it's just like, he's letting his guard down and he's becoming vulnerable. And Patrick Swayze being one of the best actors ever does it perfectly. And in that moment, it's like, how can you not root for this character? I almost wish that the, and he, and he talks about his time in the minors building up to this moment. He's, I'm going to get what's coming to me. You know, and, and then they also start to do, I think they pull back, they start to do a commentary on the reality of pro sports on how they call the shots, they own you. It's not just the game. So there's some awareness there. It's not really explored. Some ideas in this movie are not explored, much like at the very first scene when Dean says, all the scouts are going to be there and you never hear from these scouts again. You don't see one scout ever in this entire movie. You don't see them talking amongst each other. You don't see them in the stands. They don't exist. It's, it's, it's one of the few sloppy things this movie does where they, they tease the scouts and then they are never seen again. And here... Sutton kind of teases the fact that pro hockey is not just hockey. It, it's a business and you have to play by their rules. And so basically they wrap that up. And at the end, Rob Lowe says, you know, are, are you still into it? And I love that moment where Swayze says, fucking love it. <laughs> Whatever kind of laugh he does. It's just, and then you cut to, I think the, uh, I think it's the bus or them walking down the hallway, but then you smash cut to more action. So just, just a really great mix of like, good heartfelt i care about these scenes combining it with action just drama action drama action drama action interwoven with good comedy throughout so again in that smash well cut that we go into the new arena like hey we're not fucking around anymore like these these we we got to be ready for these cats i it it's interesting because you don't see it at all for the rest of the film talk about much like the scouts um to show the environment that they're going in, the rink is actually, I don't know if you noticed this, is actually chain link fence. The boards are chain link fence, but we don't see that again later as they play. Like it's regular boards. Like we don't see anybody. That's true. They, so, so did, did they, did they put in plexiglass when during the game scenes and like, what is it? not con like so not continuous. so when you so when you watch it and yeah. and maybe maybe you know what I, th I think i got it up here uh it's it's actually almost at that scene because uh, naturally i have the movie playing as we're talking um but you it goes from a chain link yeah it's chain link fence to regular boards interesting as, I, as I'm, I'm looking here and very oh nope i guess there's some more chain Maybe it's chain link fence all around. Okay, I they, stand they might corrected. just not show it. Like I up stand close, corrected. Well, they might uh, not include it in the shot. But that's perfect. I'd imagine the location is consistent. But that's perfect for the den of the villain. You know, like in yes. terms of like, or like, oh shit, like, and because they they get into a brawl almost immediately uh, in this game, like, setting the tone that this is like basically a bunch of fighters, and and just a, approaching that scene. One of my favorite shots in the entire movie are the Mustangs walking down the corridor no score it's just it's like very like i don't know it, it just it prepares you for something big coming up and, and it like really kind of puts you on the edge of your seat I, I love entrance shots you know and and as the team is walking in silence down that carpet leading to the rink it's just i don't know if it was intentional or not but it really sets the tone for something really dramatic is coming up and then 
Sutton encounters the fans who heckle him and say, you're going to get your hair messed up. And then he says, go home and hump your St. Bernard scum nuts, which is one of the worst lines in the movies, in the movie. I, as mentioned, I think the screenwriting is excellent in this movie. I think that's one of the few lines where it's like, it's a bad, it's a bad retort. And it should be noted as this going on, Dean is benched right now. Dean's not, Dean's not playing. Dean doesn't get the start until the third period, right? Like he, he is benched. He's benched because he had sex with the coach's daughter and fathers always know. So I'm sure the father knew. And so he is riding the bench. Um, yeah. And so, so as, as you mentioned, so they get, they drop the puck. There is like, uh, so period one in Thunder Bay is uneventful. You basically just see that they're getting beat up. Then you cut to a scene in the locker room and the coach is admonishing them and basically, you know, giving one of his best speeches of the, of the, um, of the movie where I, I think this is where he pulls out the bus tickets and he, he talks yep. about yep. medicine hat. Uh, and then, uh, and then he says like the Tallahassee warthogs. And I think this is Keanu Reeves best moment in the movie where he says like, you'll be lucky if you get, if you're playing for the Tallahassee warthogs. And then Keanu Reeves mouth, Keanu Reeves mouths, warthog, warthogs, you know, like, what is that? His best moment in the movie. Um, and then, then you go to the second period and that's when you get the, the big fight, the brawl, bench clearing brawl. Basically somebody hit somebody else. Coaches say, go get at it. Yeah, and in textbook movie magic fashion, everybody except the main characters get tossed. <laughs> everybody, right. everybody. I, I love Hannah kind of like with his, uh, Hannah has his like, uh, his notepad. He's like, they're, they're in the middle. See, and this is where I think the movie comes back to being welcoming to all audiences is you can go really gross with the violence here. Like, you know, one reason why I probably wouldn't want to watch like Goon all the way is it's probably too violent for me. I've seen clips and I'm like, no, no, thanks. Like, I don't like yeah. gratuitous violence. I got a question for you, man. And I know, again, we're going to, uh, 20 hours just turned into 30 hours. I'm just curious because, you know, you know how we do on this show. Uh, what What is, what's your issue with violence? You don't have to go into a long diatribe. Like, just like, just, like Patrick Swayze says in Point Break, I hate violence, man. Just period. Yeah. And, I, and I'm not, again, I'm not, I'm not like a prudish person. Like, I, I do train martial arts. I train firearms. Like, I... I, but I do these things just to be a better, stronger, well, more well-rounded person. Like I, I hope to never have to engage in my entire life. I mean, that's my, my hope, but nonetheless, I'm not ignorant to the fact that it exists in the world. And so, you know, being good at violence is a skill that one should have if ever needed. And so I work to have that, but if it were up to me, it would be kind of like peace and love, man. Like it, there wouldn't be violence in the world. But again, the reality is it, it is what it is. And so you have to prepare yourself like just in case. Um, but my, my issue with it, I don't know. It's, it's always like, I, I don't understand. Like, so if I'm in a sports arena and what, okay. So what happens if you're at a hockey or a basketball or whatever game? And what happens if these players, none of whom are good or professional fighters are necessarily good, maybe in hockey, but no other sport, especially not basketball. They start fighting. What happened? everybody stands up everybody cheers everybody i'm i'm the only person in the arena who's just sitting like waiting for it to end like i have no desire to see this like first of all you're, you're not good fighters i mean <laughs> basketball players are not fighters they're basketball players like what whatever you spend the the majority of your time doing that's what you're going to be good at so i mean obviously ufc those are talented fighters because they that's all they do you know it, professionally so um so i like number one i don't need to see non-fighters fight I mean, sometimes I'll watch matches and stuff like UFC or like karate or whatever, because I'm studying like it, it's like school for me. And, and I'm watch, I'm watching the technique. I'm not watching it because I want to see somebody else get hurt. So for me, just the kind of person that I am, I don't know why it's just the way I'm built. I hate to see people hurting other people. And so, you know, I and that translates to other things like I, I just don't want to see gratuitous violence. I'm, it, it doesn't it doesn't interest me. It, it makes me feel like bad and sad. And sometimes in life it's necessary, you know, like there are, there are wars fought in this world and there are things that happen on the street day to day and this is life. So, I mean, again, so you train in case you ever need to deal with things in real life. So you could be a prepared, well-rounded, responsible person. Um, but, you know, if I'm on, if it's my decision, it doesn't happen. Like, I, I don't, I don't want people to hurt other people. I mean, I don't know how else to put it. Okay. I was, I was just interested in, in, because I, obviously I know that you, uh, you roll 
as they say. I know I know that you roll on the mats. So and I was just not BJJ stand up karate actually. Oh, you do far less popular. It, it's what I train is traditional Okinawan Gojuyu, which I mean, there, there, I guess there are elements of being on the ground, but like in pop culture, it's probably regarded more as stand up karate. And then there's that whole issue of like the BJJ side talks about, well, all fights end up on the ground. The stand up karate guys say, well, get me on the ground. There's like this endless debate as to which is better. I don't think any is better. I think it's, it's the practitioner, not the style. Anybody you know, any style could be effective if one works hard at it and is a good student. And so uh, I, I definitely would not pick what style is good. I just happened to meet my teacher who teaches this. So this is what I study, but uh, but it, it, it is more stand up. Well, I, I, again, like it just I, I was curious for my own uh, just for me, because like for me, like I. I can do UFC, you know, if it gets out of control, like if it gets too violent, I'm kind of like, ah, oh, shit, uh, you know, doing one of those cinematic violence, though, doesn't bother me. I mean, you can push the envelope as far as you want. Having said that, this is why I'm fucked up. The flip side of that is I can't even watch like if somebody sends me like a, a link of I don't know, whatever, a, a, a short reel on Instagram or something where somebody like takes a spill on their bike or something and it's like face for I can't watch that shit. Like yeah, I can, like it hurts, it hurts too much or, you know, get someone, get their clock cleaned, you know, you know, mm -hmm. it, like whatever, if it's not in a controlled forum, but, but it's just interesting to hear you say that, especially like Brian loves you. It's not overly violent, but it's dark, mm -hmm. bro. It has darkness in it well, that would make you want to raise fists. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. I mean, and I'm human. It's like, like anybody else, like you get to the point where it's like, man, I want to punch that guy or I want to like, what? I mean, you know, he, we are wired a certain way. And I think kind of like one of life's, you know, crucibles is learning how to like maintain that and not, not let our, our, our animal instincts like dictate how we act day to day and like all those other things. But, but yeah, I mean, like to me, the, um, to me, what's scary is somebody's mind. I mean, yeah, somebody could hurt you with their body or a weapon or something like that. But, you know, that's like one on one face to face day to day. To me, like the scarier elements of our world are more so, you know, what do the, like the I'm, I hate using the word evil because it's it's so broad. But like, you know, what what the evil or bad people are capable of, it usually starts here. I mean, like when it gets to this, that's, you know, last resort and to me, like less threatening because it's like I see this like I can see that coming. But what somebody does with their mind and an intention and 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 planning when when nefarious like that to me is scary. And that's why I like the content that I would create if 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 it's going to be like in the horror or suspense or, you know, something that's meant to put you kind of on edge, it's going to probably be more like up here. It's not going to be like, oh, stabby, stabby. I mean, I could do that, but I'm not interested in that. You know, like, like I, I just make what I think is like, you know, just like, it's just from the heart, you know, it's like what I, what I believe the world is. Well, speaking of senseless violence and not wanting to see people get hurt, unfortunately, this game that Dean has just entered in the third period, we, we, we get our first gut punch of the movie uh, here, which is uh, uh gut punch would be when Racky scores the goal. Cause nobody could believe a bruiser could score the goal. I'm kidding. He is close to the net, to be fair. He kind of just like shoves it in, right? He kind of deflects something. Like, I, I, that's believable, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but he, uh, he, he takes somebody out in this particular game. And I, I hated to watch it as I was younger. And I hated to watch it as a kid because there's no sportsmanship in it. And yet, somehow or another, uh, Carl is allowed to continue, but uh, basically and he skates around and he hovers around like, OK, if you're going to do that and you shouldn't do that, wouldn't you do it? To get the fuck out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's lingering over him and circling him. I mean, now, granted, this is for cinematic effect to paint him as your villain, clearly. But in reality, what happens? tossed suspended arrested like what happens to you dude he's arrested for that like he's fucking arrested for for what he does which first derek shows him up yeah i believe carl ties uh ties the game up and then derek is like oh, i'm gonna i'm gonna get racky back Get that son of a bitch and he says it yep. twice so again again good foreshadowing throughout this movie he, you see something in swayze's eyes where he's not there anymore he he's not composed Derek Sutton that's kissing the referee amidst the brawl, which he does, which is a great comedic moment. And in the middle of the chaos, he picks up a ref referee and, and smooches him and <laughs> he lets out that like wild man laugh. And then he goes like the whole movie, he is his character. And then 
he snaps because you see in his eyes, I'm going to, he's like, kind of like, kind of bouncing. I'm going to get that son of a bitch. And, and you, you see that coming as an audience member, like something, something bad is coming up. And, and if you're a seasoned movie vet, you know, something bad's going to come up for you, like for you, the audience member, not, you know, and, um, but anyway, it, so just a fun, fun little side. Well, it's not fun at all. In fact, I don't even know why I'm going to share this over the airwaves, but I'll never forget. Um, I was playing actually in a roller hockey game. I, uh, young teens and uh kid had taken, uh, just, just cross check me a little bit into the boards and, uh, next shift, um, skated up behind him, kicked out his skate from under him. And obviously he went flying. Luckily he didn't like tear anything or hit his head or anything like that, but I'll never forget my stepdad fucking screamed at me for 15 minutes after that. You don't fucking play like that. That's fucking dirty. How dare you? I taught you better about da, 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 da. The reason why I tell that apparently I'm no better than fucking Carl Racky because fucking Carl. So after Derek gets the goal and he's celebrating or whatever, and he gets the best of Carl, Carl skates up from behind him, kicks out his skate or I'm sorry. No, actually sweeps him with the stick. He, well, he, yeah, well, he knocks his helmet off. He helmet knocks off first. Helmet Very calculated. Off. He's yes. A criminal. He's, he should have been arrested because like, sociopath. if somebody was recording that game, all they have Michael to do Matt. is, that's right, is replay it back and say, oh, not only did he knock off his helmet first. On TV. Court. Yes. You see yep. Jesse watching on TV. Now, now, granted, the TV might not have caught that. It might have been on the action celebrating. And, and being a low budget minor league broadcast, the odds are you might not have multiple cameras covering every angle like an NFL broadcast. So conceivably, it wasn't captured on camera. Yeah. Yeah. And and wouldn't you know it knocks off his helmet, skates up from behind him, kicks his skate out from under him. Derek's legs fly out from under him and he cracks his head on the ice. And, you know, I mean, everybody, uh, everybody in the arena knows immediately like this went from bad to really, really worse with an exposed uh, cranium hitting the ice. And it's very now, graphic to watch, even though there's no blood. There, it really is, dude. Like, and, and I was even thinking that tough to watch is I was re watching it, like knowing, knowing full well that it's about to happen. Like, I think that goes back to what we were just discussing 10 minutes ago. Like, I can watch cinematic violence no problem for whatever reason. If it's rooted in reality, it does get a little tough for me. And because I've been a part of something similar, I, I mean, I was sitting there hating myself. I was like, oh my God, if I can, you actually did that to someone, you, sh you should be in jail, Sean. Fuck you. But <laughs> as, I, as I'm watching, Thankfully, I'm imagining the person in your situation made it out. Okay. Oh, yeah. No, he was fine. He popped up right go. away. If anything, like, I bet you I hurt more after the, the oh, yeah. reaming I got from my stepdad than he yeah. actually did physical pain. I felt Absolutely. so horrible. Hey, that um, was a life lesson. Yeah, dude, there you he go. was not fucking playing, dude. Like, I, yep. I didn't even have my skates off in the locker room before he fucking started in on me. And he mm -hmm. was just like, who, who the fuck do you think you are? Where would you? Anyway, and I, what I should have said in hindsight was, well, you shouldn't have showed me the movie Youngblood. And then I would have never known about that. There so <laughs> there's a caveat for this review. Yeah. <laughs> you're not watch if you're in junior hockey. <laughs> Peewee hockey. If you're in Peewee hockey, not allowed. Uh, so Derek cracks his head. We we just lose one half of our our bromance, our our tutelage that was a tutelage of minor league hockey. One 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 quick point before we move on from that uh, is in the locker room prior to the third period. So that's the third period. It's first, second, third. This is the only scene in the movie where you get all three periods. But Dean is benched, and the reason why he gets put into the game, and Dean is on the ice when Derek uh, gets taken out, and he skates over to him immediately. I think he's yeah. Dean scores a goal celebrating and skates over so the reason why dean is on the ice is because whoever else was playing left wing uh what is this injury Th this was after the brawl frazier was like looking up somebody's nose and like the guy's nose was like like what is stuck in there it's the weirdest looking injury did you notice that at all like yeah, it looked yeah, like yeah. somebody was like wedged up his nose and then frazier's like looking up with a with a light and he turns to chadwick and he, he just shakes his head not gonna go so like it was it's just a weird injury. Yeah. What yeah. Was I, mean, that? I don't I I have no idea. In fact, I think like sometimes you just throw in shit to see if the audience will like fucking like catalog that. Like I feel just, like just a bad injury, I guess. But I'm like, <laughs> like, what did something is up there? 
what is that anyway so moving on uh i just thought that was weird so then then you go to uh a- after that we could we're won to- that game uh, Mustangs lost that game. And I believe that we go right to the hospital after that. And right. Ra- right at, like when we're in the hospital and I just, again, talk about kind of the effectiveness of this movie. Um, or you could say, you know, it's over the top when this happens. But for me, hearing Derek's injury, like they, they went for broke on it. And what I mean by that is like, they drive home the point immediately after Derek gets or cracks his head on the ice, he's never going to play again. Like, I believe one of the first lines that, uh, in the bus on the way home, right. When they're kind of like recapping the scene. Uh, well, this is when Dean is in the hospital room with Derek, which like from a timeline standpoint, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense because right after that, then we're on the bus ride home and him and Jesse are having an argument, you know, I should have did more for Derek, but, but they, just how definitive they end Derek's career. Oh yeah. They had to put a plate in my head and I'm like, Holy shit, dude. Like, yeah. Like I feel it's, I, I still feel cold. Like I'm still in the ice. I put a plate. Yeah. In my head. Yeah, dude. And like, and for mm. me, it's like, I don't even, I don't know necessarily where I'm going with this, uh, but like when I think about it, like, it was already tragic enough and we could have left it at that. Like he's not going to play the playoffs or again, you know, right. like it, we can almost have like uh, a breaking bad second to last episode, not the final episode, the one where he's in the bar. We leave the idea that maybe Derek can come back and play some. I would have liked that too. It was yeah. very depressing to me because to me, like I wouldn't mind if young blood was about Derek Sutton. They called Sutton. Dude, you know, oh, yeah, and young blood is another character, but they follow Sutton and they see it. So, yeah, I mean, to me, it's and it's also Patrick Swayze. Um, so I agree. I, I wish I would have left it a little bit more open. And so 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 on the bus ride back, what I think is is interesting is you get kind of like the reaction. So Murray Chadwick, who's the toughest Bronco in the story, is just like sitting there staring off in the space. Then you, I, I think they did this intentionally. You pan over to the assistant coach talking with the trainer, basically saying like, yeah, it's a damn shame what happened. We're not going to find anybody else to replace him. And I, I don't know whether Dean's character, like two or three rows back, heard that line. But I think they put that in there to show you what Derek had teased in an earlier conversation where this is a business and they might not really care about you. They care about what you can do. I, I just feel like that was probably the, the most ice cold moment more so than Rocky hurting him was the assistant coach saying like, yeah, we're not going to get somebody to replace him. It's like, this is the heart and soul of your team. And I, I feel like that was intentional. I feel like that was a commentary on sports, pro sports or. I business. agree. And this is where we also have Dean. I, I shouldn't say for the first time, like sticking up for himself again, because the coach, right. once they get back yep. and again, the coldness that can be, I, I, I hate to speak in like, deep metaphors but the coldness of sports you know <laughs> like the 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 coach gets back and he's just like yeah listen i know derek just died a hockey death but uh it's time to practice you know like we're we're gonna get back there uh get back out there on the ice and dean's like wait a fucking minute like i just even though from a timeline standpoint it doesn't make us make any sense i was just in the hospital <laughs> with Derek and he's never going to play again, you know, and now you want us to come out and practice. Fuck this. I'm out of here. And of course you go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just gonna say it, it, it struck me as insensitive, but believable. Yeah. A hundred percent because that, that is the moment where Dean needs to realize uh, it, to uh, some extent, because we, again, uh, out of the many things that aren't really explored, Dean, I think is realizing there's more to life at ho- than hockey at this point like like i don't like i just watch my friend go down and he's never going to play again i'm not going i'm not ready to go back out on the ice and this <clears throat> leads to an argument between jesse and dean which is where we do it, what i like to call some of the lifetime movie moments where it, it's just, probably the worst scene in the movie I, I would I would tend to agree with you where Dean is just professing like I, I can't go back and play hockey again. I got my friend killed. And it's like, well, your friend's not dead, but fucking like and it's not your fault. Like you scored a goal and some asshole fucking took his legs out like you have nothing to do with it. And of course, you know, Jesse is just like, wait a minute. I, I broke all my rules to be with you. And now you're fucking going home. And that leads into, I, I feel like she wanted him to quit because she's saying like, that could have been you. And then, and then to me, this is Rob Lowe's worst line reading in the entire movie where Jesse says it could have been you. 
And then he says, well, maybe it should have been. Like, I, it was something like, it was like, well, maybe it should have been. Yeah, it sounds, it's like very, like, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't believe that. Like that, that's not believable. Like, I'm sorry, Rob Lowe, but that, no. I love Rob Lowe. I love this movie. So don't, don't, don't get it like wrong, like where I'm coming from, but that was just not a good performance. Don't you hate how we have to do that nowadays, how we have to clarify that, like, listen, we're, <laughs> we, we have been talking, like, if Rob's like, oh, fuck those guys, you know, not Rob's never going to listen to this, but if he did, oh, fuck those guys, they said this, that, and the other thing. Rob, we have been talking about young blood for over two, two hours. So I don't want to ridiculous. Hear, yeah, this dude. is for the diehards, man. This yeah, is for the hockey fans. This is for the yeah, young yeah. fans. Yeah. So sorry, before, everybody else. Yeah. So before you start you going, <laughs> um, so in this, so it actually th- that was a pretty rough scene to watch. If we're ter- uh, talking about just watching filmmaking or the art of filmmaking, we we can agree that that was pretty tough to watch. But the next, you need scenes, you needed the romance angle. You did. No, you, you did. Don't. You don't. You don't need. A fucking love story in every movie so when i make movies i never have opening credits so i hate watching them and i don't have superfluous love stories i'm not saying i'm so great at all trust me i am just saying that just my taste so in anything that i make i promise you there will not be opening credits and there will not be a superfluous love story that's that's my only guarantee i can't say whether it's good or bad but i will have Rob Lowe's sitting back right now going, and he's pretentious too. He doesn't do. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Obviously. so it does lead into what is the harder scenes to watch. For. It's only this sequence is just like, I feel like it reminds me of the South Park song. Even Rocky had a montage. That's what happens here. Like Dean goes home all deflated and I'm never going to play again. And he's back on the farm and he's a fuck up on the farm. Like and we can't... get one of the best scenes in the movie, though. When, when uh, Kelly, when Jim, I think Young's plural, Jim, yeah, Jim Young's, I think he's a great actor. Like, like I, I said, do. I do. Too. I love Rob Lowe, but all the actors around him are much better than him in this movie. And so, and and this scene is no different. So, and granted, he's playing an immature, pouty seventeen-year-old. So it's not, it's not, it's not all his fault necessarily. It's like this is kind of his character, right? And so when 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 the big brother comes in, when Kelly comes in and he's kind of like mocking him a little bit, he's being very sarcastic with him. Like, you know, like, Oh, the coach is real mean. And my, my friend, my best friend ain't feeling too well. That's like, it's harsh, but it's like it, that's, that's like a tough big brother. I mean, and then when Rob Lowe kind of cries back at him in like a very pouty immature way, again, this is the character. He says, I I like how a few things that Kelly says, he says, um, you know, like, do, do you think if your buddy would have been hurt, he would have gone home? No way. And then he has a line where he says, and you never give up. It's just his performance in that scene is fucking great. It is fucking great. great actor. Dude. Like I was fired up like in internalizing it when he's just like, because I think we've all had those moments before in life where like we may or may not have done something because someone close to us, whatever. Like I know I have a couple of times where I didn't do something because of X, Y, Z with a friend or whatever. And I definitely was feeling him in that moment, but it's also true. And I think it also, again, we circle around to the re the realism of what is sports. You know what I'm saying? Because he's absolutely right in that moment. Like he's a big brother being a big yeah. brother. And the younger sibling, what the younger sibling doesn't want to hear. I think a lot of us have been there. Yeah. Yeah. And and it, which is nice because it closes out the previous segment or it is. I don't know if it happens before or after, but we it's the end of it's the end of act two. Definitely. It, but it was a nice way to keep me still invested in it because watching it now, I don't think I, I remember thinking the same shit when I was younger watching this, but watching it now, like do we, re- we, we have a sweating Rob Lowe in a barn punching a punching bag. Like he's only got 48 hours to, to make it back to the, you don't learn to fight in two. Days. No, when dude. I saw that. I thought that is such bullshit. What that's trying to be is Rocky four montage when he's like training in the barn and stuff, but like Rocky is a fighter and he's training what he knows. Rob Lowe doesn't know anything about fighting. And in 48 hours, you're going to try and take on somebody who is good at violence probably a criminal you're going to try and go hand to hand with him with no dirty tricks Uh, hollywood that's line of the that doesn't happen line of the podcast is rocky is a fighter (laughs) because i I, I mean because i I mean dude it it makes perfect sense like it just doesn't 
we don't we didn't need any of that. We didn't need any of the and, and here's the thing. We also have a really good moment, but it doesn't make sense for me. We have a really good moment with him and his dad in the sequence. Like, oh, yeah, we, we kind of we we because I, I don't think up until this moment we've even seen the dad since the dinner scene. I, I at least that I he was he know. was like brooding over the uh, his his sons kind of working together with with like some of those long shots like, hmm, what are they doing? Well, what's what's happening here? So it was, I'm on my old ass tractor. Yeah, I'm on my old tractor, like whatever. Good character. Oh, yeah, good character. Good, good lines for him. And but we did have a really good scene, even though, again, it doesn't make any sense. Like, how long did Dean go home? Was it two years or was it two days? Like, I can't. It was like a weekend. Yeah. He learns the fight. He, he <laughs> solves all of his relationship problems. He has enlightenment. I mean. But when him and his dad square off and in and, and um, for the audience, if you haven't seen the film and you've made it two hours and 20 minutes into this <laughs> podcast, when Ooh, they square off, congrats. it's not a fight. It's not a fight. He is actually showing him how to keep his balance during. During the fight and something mm -hmm. that he can do as a smaller um player yeah. to you know you fuck up somebody bigger than him and i do love that in fact there was part of me when i was going back and re-watching it it was let's cut everything you know the, the him fucking around at the farm and being a fuck up let's cut all that let's cut all that let's just have him pouting the brother gives him you know the big brother speech right. and then the next thing you know the, the dad just comes up and is like hey come with me and then we see that sequence and i think we, we trim the fat a little bit because yeah because i movie, do like some of the shots of him like it's kind of comical he's back on the farm he, the chicken's fucking with him and it, it's just you know, the brother is like dumping more hay on him than he can handle. Like I, that didn't bother me because it's like, okay, that shows you that like, this is your life. Yeah. You don't want to be a hockey player. Well, get used to this shit, but you know yeah, I, cut out, cut out the, the training stuff. Like, mm. you know what I actually thought? And it's only because it had been a while since I had seen it, but when they were dumping the hay on it, when I watched it older, I was like, Oh shit. Did, did Jesse come back to see him at the farm? Like, are we going to, are we going to have this brief moment sure where she's like, moment. Hey, uh, you need to pull your head out of your ass. So that's why I was pouring more hay on you. I met your dad. We're cool now. That that only took we only took about five minutes. But we're gonna we're gonna need you back at the rink ASAP. So that would have been a good moment. Not yeah. bad. Yeah, nice play. Well played. Um. Well, uh, if you had to guess, Seth, do you think do you think Dean's gonna go back and play? Well. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> do you do you do you think he's going to go back and join the Mustangs after being at home for two years or two days? Do, do, I, I think he's going to. I think I, I think he's going to be the best fighter, the best goal scorer, the best lover, the best uh, brother and son in the world, because this is what Hollywood is. That's my guess. You know what? I'm that. I think uh, you believe it or not, uh, you're going to take home the prize today because you are 100 percent right. He fucking he goes back and it's time to fucking. Well, we, we got to bring it home now, Seth. It, we're 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 into yep. act three and act three on some level feels like it lasts about 14 minutes and it, it is right. just boom, 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 which I like. Um, minus the end end and don't worry we'll get there um, just as a little side note in some of these end sequences we do see Jesse and I'm so annoyed by her red fingertipless uh, gloves I just wanted to point that out I, as no, no right. I just the her Canadian out thing yeah that, her outfits in, in this stakeholder I, I don't know her uh, outfits in this are abominable <laughs> See, I don't I don't mind her wardrobe I think I mean they're a little like I, that like camo green she wears a lot but like I I feel like uh or what is like like the army like oh, oh something green whatever that military green and she wears that a lot but she she's bundled up because it's Canada but like I don't know I, I I think her wardrobe and her like makeup hair whatever I think she's like like pretty cute throughout the whole thing like that and I'm pretty sensitive to that like if somebody wears if a girl wears sandals I'm out, I'm done so I'm like I'm super I'm like Birkenstocks and which is probably not going to be a popular take in this day and age but like if I see certain things I'm like Whoo, no thanks and not that I'm so special but I just I have my own peculiar weird tastes Rob Lowe's screaming at the dashboard right now are they really talking about the costume design of Cynthia Gibb in a 40 yeah. year old movie is that is that really what they're talking about right now yeah, but well, anyway I'm sensitive to that yeah I'm sensitive to that <laughs> So a day on the farm, we're we're done. We we uh, you know what we forgot to mention the day on the farm. There's also weightlifting in there. Like he's also trying pretty to small weights, huh? <laughs> he looks pretty thin too. He's 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 small small guy in this movie. 
So like, I'm, I'm not taking it too seriously. I'm sorry. It's like, so you, you can cheat boxing scenes to look pretty powerful. It's, but when he's like hitting that bag, just that like, uh, I'm not buying that. I'm sorry. Like, even even him lifting, like I'm almost like I'm sorry. But if it's yeah. not a uh, if it's, it's not, not a if it's not a carriage load of people in a barn, if you remember that, that was boy, you, oh dude, he's on. not Stallone. But again, like this is your, you want like a young, good looking lead actor. He's not a tough guy, but you're trying to make him into a tough guy, and this is the nexus that we're at. I just need sit-ups at the edge of a a fenceless a fenceless story in a barn. I just I need somebody yeah. doing sit-ups ten feet in the air. I like the Rocky montage, the Rocky Four montage to me. Like I like watching that, even though some people might see it as unnecessary. Like that's a good one though. That whole movie is just one montage, and if for anybody, I I, I didn't like the driving montage. I <laughs> dude I I still to this day love Rocky 4 even though I'm annoyed and I'm just going to say it and then we're going to just move past it. Why do we do a director's cut of Rocky 4? I watched the Rocky 4 director's cut. There was like two and a half more minutes. It did nothing for the film. Well, you know like, that that's a studio trying to make more money. That's so, a money grab. I was so We annoyed, have this dude. IP. How can we make more money? You know, you release a special edition and that edition and that, I mean that that's just business. Now, you know, one I, more minute you can call it something else. Now I can't remember. I, I'm pretty sure d- uh, Dean shows up in diva fashion, <laughs> diva fashion to this new game. Like I believe the the locker room's fucking empty. Like they've they're already out on He's the late. ice. How yeah. are you late? Dude, how now? How are you fucking late? And on top, of I was of that, training so hard. I trained up until the very last. I literally second. just got out of the gym. Like I drove from <laughs> the gym to the locker room, and it it was one of those moments where I'm just like, oh, you fucking diva. But we yes. do have it's it's, but it's that the whole diva moment for for good is squandered by who we have in the locker room. You know, awaiting right. awaiting for him, which is a bandaged up looking horrible Derek look at uh, looking horrible yeah, they did, Patrick Swayze they some makeup on him he looked like shit I mean it works too like like when I looked at him I was like oh yeah that's a head injury head injury for sure yeah um but we also kind of have the 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 coach moment too just kind of like you know I I believe with the coach it's just a yeah, nod, nod. Sorry. He, when, when he approaches the door he says if I can get you know it, you know I I, I think Murray Chadwick, so Ed Loud. I don't want to mispronounce his name and RIP, but I think it's Ed L- Loud Louder. It looks like Lauder, but I think it's L- Lauder. Okay. Anyway, I, I apologize for any mispronunciation, but the the great actor who played the coach, um, he stands in the doorway and he says, like, you think it's that easy? You can get back on the team. And then Rob Lowe comes up to him and he says, um, you know, if I get by you, can, would you let me in? And then the coach says, What makes you think you can get by me? And then they have this kind of like standoff. It was a nice moment, you know, then he lets in. And as you mentioned, he sees a very bandaged up Patrick Swayze. And 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 to me, Rob Lowe's most genuine moment as far as like emoting uh, is in this scene, because much like I can tell in a movie, I, I, I'm, I feel not to brag. I'd like to remain humble, but I feel like I'm very good at realizing when people break character. I mean, being an actor and a filmmaker, like I I think that's part of it, but just like human nature. Like when I'm watching something, the second somebody breaks character, they'd start laughing or something. Or I can always tell when they break character, when they're laughing for real. But in this scene, Rob Lowe starts crying for real, which is genuine, which is great acting. And so when they when they when they have the face off, Patrick Swayze and Rob Lowe, and Rob Lowe says, look, man, just forget about what I said about getting Racky. Just win the game. And of course, Patrick Swayze, start to finish, always fucking great, flawless. I've never seen him turn in a bad performance ever. Again, RIP. What do you what do you think about Tu Wong Fu? Thanks for everything. Julie Newmar. Oh god. Thankfully, didn't see it. I have no desire. You want to hear something super fucked up? For whatever reason, me and my brother would watch that movie over and over. And I what is it about? Uh, so I'm not going to get, well, I, I think I'll get three of the four. I'm pretty sure you got Patrick Swayze, you have Wesley, Wesley Snipes, Snipes and you have John Leguizimo and they are drag Queens. Okay. And that, that literally is the movie. They want to be the accepted. Movie. They, they want to be correct. They want to be accepted for okay. being drag Queens in the early nineties, which obviously mm. kind of frowned upon back there. You're kind of weird, sure. you know? And uh, no, I just, I told myself, in fact, in stars at the top of my notes here, it says, find a way to shoehorn Tu Wong Fu 
success yeah, yeah. congrats <laughs> um check that uh, one off yeah yeah and people like but here's the thing if i were really to contemplate that movie live right now that movie's way ahead of its time i don't care what anybody I'm sure says. like yeah. it's i mean dude you had wesley snipes look like a banging chick what am i talking mm-hmm. about what am i we i have derailed speaking truth weren't we uh weren't we talking about uh young blood i think we were so like, so so the the moment where uh they go in for the hug rob Lowe actually like i love this moment because because it's genuine you could tell he starts really crying he kind of like says like come here come here you know like when you're about to hug somebody but he couldn't get it out because he was crying because he was watching patrick swayze and the moment was i mean i mean i cried i cried in this movie so like when you're an emotional person you can get like triggered to certain emotions and so like acting opposite of somebody so good was bringing out more in Rob Lowe, you know? So, so when he goes in for that hug and he's, he, he kind of mouths like, come here. And like, you could tell that he's crying shit. Frazier, the, he got a shot of Frazier, like kind of like crying off to the side. The coach is not crying. He's just stone faced. So that's his character. It's just so, so well done. You have Hewitt who's suspended there. So like all the key players in the family are there. And the fact that Rob Lowe legit was crying because of the power of Swayze. I mean, just like it's, one of the best scenes in the movie by far great acting great writing it sets it off boom there you go now um it is funny that we it, it possible for a movie that i mean for the most part like you know it, we're not talking about an inception plot line here for <laughs> you the bro the, the the bromance love. <laughs> the bromance was between uh there the heart of the movie was the bromance between Derek and Dean now right. i would actually say i don't disagree with that of course and besides art is whatever you make it you know it's what it means sure. to you sure. for me I think I might go on record and say that the movie is more about the family, Seth, the family, because as we enter in uh, the game, now that it's game time, I think a very great moment for me to see, or maybe it's because I hate my real father and love my stepdad. Maybe that's it is when the, uh, <laughs> with, when the brother and the dad are now in the stands for the first time. Like that was a nice moment. I love like, that. Yeah. Now yeah. it comes full circle. I'm like, fuck yeah, dude. Dad took time away from that his shitty ass farm work, you know, shoveling for the first manure. time. That's yeah, right. Come. For the first time in 35 years, he's never taken a day off. And now he's going to come see his dad or his son play, play hockey in the minors. And I do think because I, I go back and forth because it, it could actually be, I would think you would agree with me too. It could be about all three of them. It could be, it could be about just uh, Cynthia Gibb and Rob Lowe. It could be about them. Oof. And yeah. Boring. <laughs> yeah, it could be about uh, Derek and Dean or yeah. it could be about the family or yes. we could say, fuck it. And it's about everything. I think it's about everything. It's about everything. about everything. We got ourselves a goddamn hockey miracle, pun intended. So we're now we're in the th- I should be murdered for that line. So now we're Do you we're, believe we're, in miracles? <laughs> I, it's a Al miracle. Michaels, ASU alum. It's a miracle that somebody did a podcast over two and a half hours on Youngblood. That's a fucking miracle, dude. And going for broke. We play for keeps around here. That's at, right. At Ellis Cinema. We play that's, for keeps. Don't yeah, the only that. The only thing we're doing, we're doing right is the way that it was taught to me. I don't even. Those who are meant to find it will find it. And they will. And they will. I already literally since we've been talking, I've had a few people like going, are you done yet? Are you done yet? You know, post no, man, this movie deserves more. We'll yeah. never done. We're yeah. doing 24 hour podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so now we're at the game and I we there's some moments that I really like. And then there's moments that I just didn't think we need like him losing the tooth right out the jump. Like, I agree. Yeah, get, like we just like, once comp- again, great foreshadowing this movie early in the movie, when he first is talking with Cynthia Gibb, he, she, she says uh, something like, you know, you know, hockey players don't have their teeth or like, or do you? And then he goes, no, nope, see, they're all mine. Good foreshadow. Good we filming. Did, we did tie it. We did tie it back. It was just one of those things where I've already seen the violence from Racky. You know, now I kind right. of want to let it, it kind of let it fester until we do hit the. It's very dramatic as we come to a close. So uh, who who is who are the Mustangs playing? I forget the name off the top of Thunder my head. Thunder Bay Bombers. That's right. Thunder Bay Bombers. So we got looking the like the Boston Bruins. Yes. With their chain link fences and their jerseys. Like I, uh, when I was a kid, I had two jerseys. I had the Islanders and Bruins. I was like, it was nice looking jersey, nice color scheme, nice jersey, but intimidating. The goalie mask, the skeleton, intimidating. Um, 
Mustangs are the good guys. They're in like almost red, white, and blue. I mean, it, it's white and red because it's probably Canada. It's like kind of like a, the home country, just all American, all Canadian look. Um, Mustang, a majestic pony mascot. Um, so yeah, done all the design done very well. I would just like to point out as someone who went to a school where their mascot was a horse, actually, I went from, I went from a, I, I was a kicking mule. And while we're on the subject of a Mustang, I just, <laughs> I, I just don't like that. For what were they called like, the donkeys? What, wait, we, we were called, mule? we were called the Bedford kicking mules. Literally the kicking mules. The kicking mules, sir. That's funny. But and and then many the years Bedford later, jackasses are coming yeah, to town. Let's dude, jack them up. If you don't think that we heard that five hundred times going into other people's <laughs> fucking, yeah, I mean, but like you're oh, you're man. you're hundred percent though beach right now. <laughs> but and it turns out even all these you are are apparently our school still racist. They got in big trouble with a football game doing some racist shit earlier. I was like, yeah, you're still oh, man, you're, you're a fucking farm ass team that still calls themselves the kicking mules. And until you change that name, you're not going to yeah. get anybody that's fucking. Anyway, right. I yeah. just I, I never understood the Mustang. Like why? Because cars are so infused into our history. Is that why the Mustang mascot seems to be prevalent in almost every state? We are just talking about dumb shit right now. I had my my grade school was the unicorns. No, really Talk about progressive. Yeah, I, I'm all right with the unicorns because the unicorns implies that like there's just like it's only us. Like it's just one. You know, <laughs> yeah. a kicking mule. There's a there's message a... of unity throughout, woven throughout my elementary school in Long Island. Yeah. yeah. See, now I actually like my elementary school mascot. It was a jaguar. Why couldn't I fucking keep that That's a good for one. all That's my a strong yeah. animal? Fuck yeah, strong dude. mascot. Yeah, I had tigers in high school. Just junior high, high school. Tiger. All tigers. <laughs> Boring. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say tigers. Lot... Yeah, they're vicious. Yeah, okay. yeah. And they're anyway, sh- and they're a shitty baseball team. So it, uh, we're we're in the we're we're in the thick of it. And right. final know, game, final scenes, final game, final scenes. Dean and Carl are going at it because, you know, Derek's out now. We don't we Derek is Derek's got a plate in his head. In fact, mm-hmm. every time uh, his girlfriend turns on the microwave, he pisses his pants and forgets who he is for a half hour or so. Oh, and I, I, I don't I don't know why I threw in a Christmas vacation. It's not written in my notes. It just it, I, I don't know, dude. Freestyle. Anyway. <laughs> improv. A little improv. Never yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, not at all. I don't know you if you folks know. We're giving you all kinds. He's a triple threat. <laughs> I don't know if you know this singing improv. Yeah. Yeah. I went to second city. I didn't know if you knew that. a name uh, and a place yeah, 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 yeah. and a household appliance. That's right. Yes. And yes. And <laughs> um, off so the rails. Yes. The rails off, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's get let's get back on the skates. So we are yeah, a lot of cat and mouse between Rob Lowe and, and Racky throughout the final game. Well, well done. Yeah. And it and it should be too. And and it's got this nice build. So now we finally get there. Wouldn't you know it? Uh Dean is skating down the ice. He could the game's tied right now. Game's tied. And of course, Carl Racky is gonna trip him to uh force a penalty shot what he, with what what does he do when he knocks out the tooth? It's not it, it's it's actually well done when the first time he injures him. I'm sorry, like I'm 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 going back, but just we'll we'll, we'll skip forward, but when he knocks out the tooth, he just hits him in the face with a stick. Is that what he does? It's, yeah, it's not just, shown. No, yeah, okay. he just hits him in the face with a stick. Okay, and it's sorry. just like, hey, yeah, your boy, your boy can't save you now. It's just me. It's just me and you out yeah, here. What so are you going to do? He gets the cap. He doesn't have his all of his real teeth now, as foreshadowed earlier. So now, now he gets tripped up at the end of the game. Ten seconds left. Yep, ten seconds left. Trips but him up. Well done. Like really, really good tension built up because he's tripped, and then you get the slide, and then you cut to the brother in the stand saying like, call it Hannah, call it. Then you cut to the bench, call it Hannah, you meathead. He actually called him a meathead. And then you see the inner conflict in Hannah. I've never called a penalty against the Thunder Bay Bombers ever. <laughs> like, should I do it for the first time? The most penalized dirty team in the league. And then he just like threw up the arm. Wait, is that what he does? Like what? I forget what the hands are. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely he does. Yeah. Like um, it just really good tension. Well done. Just well just well done actually like it really reminded me of this old clip uh old michael jordan clip i actually i think he played for the wizards at this point but he was talking to the ref and he's like yeah he definitely fouled me as i was as i was going to the hope and he's like are you are you sure michael are you sure michael that he fouled you and michael's like yeah yeah he fouled me and then the ref immediately is just like calls the calls the foul and i was like damn dude michael had that power back in the day dude (laughs) where now these days like everybody who's an all-star has it like they don't get fouls called at all but that's like a whole other uh 
rabbit hole to go down. All right. So yeah, back to yeah, the game. Yes. Yeah. Back tripped. to the game. So tripped up penalty 10 shot. seconds left, 10 seconds left. We're tied up, tripped up penalty shot. Do you think Dean Youngblood <laughs> is going to miss? I don't fucking think so. I don't. I, uh, he shelves that shit. So, in fact, we, this is man. I wish you would have told me this is where we need Wayne's opinion on placement of puck for that penalty shot. You know, we need Wayne Gretzky to weigh in, let us know. Oh yeah. That's what I've been thinking the whole time. That's where I was putting it from the second I started skating. Um, well, but that's not, that's not a great way to end it though. Seth, it's not perfect. It's not perfect. The goal is not enough. But you skipped over the goal. So let me just throw this in there. Like as somebody who played hockey, us both, I, some, I've, okay, two things in this sequence I did for my whole hockey playing life is when he starts, and this is definitely for hockey players out there or people who are interested in hockey, but when he starts out, so he, he kicks the, he skates to the right of the puck and then he, with his right leg, he, he kicks the puck in front of him, which is a move ever since I saw that movie, I did so many times. That's one thing that he did. Almost the equivalent of in basketball, like a wraparound pass. Like if you have the ball here and you pass it that way around your back, very similar movement. And then when he goes in on the goal, he fakes the slap shot. So the goalie, you know, the goalie moves to defend that. He brings the stick down and then he does the old whip, you know, dipsy do where he, he, he doesn't take the slap shot. He brings it around the goalie and then wrist shots it in. So two things that I replicated as a hockey player was that, that little kick behind the back, which is not that big of a move, but I was 10 years old when I saw it. And like, I've never seen those moves before. Also the fake slap shot. And then you bring it down and you kind of like go left or right or whatever. So like the, 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 choreography or whatever you would call it the, the 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 consultation in that sequence it like the hockey action throughout in this movie is stellar and I, i've seen a lot of sports movies that can't get the action on the field or the ice or whatever right and this is one of the few movies that every single most action on the ice is really well done i feel like in the final game and some of the hockey sequences it's almost moving in slow motion but for the most part that's Tiny, tiny criticism. Uh, overall, they're extremely well done. And this penalty shot is very well. It was interesting. It was good hockey. Um, it was tense. So, yeah, again, extremely well done action. And to your point, something that uh, you, you talk about kicking the puck to yourself, um, something I so I only had two penalty shots the entire time that I've ever played hockey and both of them for uh, theatrical purpose and dramatic purposes. I definitely skated around the puck at center ice a couple of times before I decided mm -hmm. to embark on going in. You got to do that. And you want to know where mm -hmm. I learned that? God strike me dead with an incurable disease right now. If I'm lying, fucking young blood taught me that. Mm hmm. Actually, yeah. I don't really, I don't really a think thing. hail Satan. And so he shelves it. He fucking, he shelves it and Mustangs are, are advancing. One, one quick side note. Sorry. Go ahead. This is, no, why, no. why not get side? No stone that. should be unturned here. <laughs> and this is a different sport, different movie, but talking about taking moves I've seen in movies and using it in real life. One of my favorite moves in basketball that I saw Billy Hoyle do in white men can't jump, which is probably, yeah, my favorite, by far my favorite basketball movie. So when I think the the basketball scenes on the movie were some of the best I've ever seen any basketball movie, but so the scene in White Men Can't Jump where Billy as a guard, he is near the free throw line and he jumps up to shoot it from there. And of course the defender tries to, you know, block the shot. And at the apex of his jump, he throws it, passes it to somebody under the basket who has an easy layup because everybody on the court thinks he's going to shoot. So they're all positioning for a leap, a rebound, but if you have your heads up, which you should never look away from the ball or the puck or anything, you know, they're, they're still watching to see what he's going to do in that, that whip pass. So that I had done that move so many times. It always works. I don't understand. It's in a movie. How do you fall for that? Back to Youngblood. Sorry. Sorry, but. No, that's okay. In fact, I'm going to, I'm going to compliment your favorite basketball movie. And say my favorite basketball movie is the air up there with Kevin Bacon. I haven't even seen it. Now I have to see it. Actually, that was ironic. I was just joking. That movie's horrible. I will not see it. And I'm not going to watch it. And in fact, it now that I'm actually kind of, I haven't seen it in a couple of decades. Now that I'm contemplating it, it might be kind of racist. Now that I think about it. <laughs> yeah. because, I'm sure a lot of movies. From well, the 80s and 90s. so it's about Kevin Bacon going to Africa to find the tallest center he can. Oh, boy. Yep. 
Yep. No, if I had to think about a basketball movie, White Man Can Jumps, uh, phenomenal. Underrated or maybe perfectly rated, Blue Chips. Blue I chips. like that one. That was well done. Good, good. Some of Nick Nolte's scenes in there, he's just a crazy man. I love Nick Nolte, but like he's he's insane in that movie. Like it's a little too insane for me. Um, love the movie. Uh, Nick Nolte's too over the top. I know he's trying to channel Bobby Knight or whatever, but the the basketball scenes in that movie were. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Um, second place for me would be Above the Rim. Basketball scenes in Above the Rim were fucking amazing. If you've never seen Above the Rim and you want to see good basketball sequences, that I mean, yeah. I'm still not playing yeah, basketball on a fucking rooftop, dude. Now, I sure as shit am not playing basketball on a fucking rooftop where the rim is at the edge of the fucking roof. Like I good planning. Yeah, you're, thinking, you're using your head. You're thinking ahead. <laughs> but that was a great movie. I love that. Movie. Yeah, yeah. R.I.P. Tupac. Um, we uh, so we we got we we got to have a shot. Our, yeah, you're up. We got to have our fight, dude. We we have to have some have finality fists. between Fucking Hollywood. Yeah, dude. Fists. So, and I don't mind it. The only thing <laughs> that I minded, and we mentioned it at the top of the first hour, um, the stick play in this movie is still just as jarring to watch as when I first yeah. saw it many, many years ago, yeah. as to now where I'm just like, we really, I think that is like one of the only, one of the very few times in this movie where we are taking liberties in and almost, it's almost like the fighting wasn't good enough, if that makes sense, mm -hmm. that we had to add a weapon into it. And, and that have may jousting be, as well. Yeah, like that may be where your producer, um, uh, your the producers are coming in is like yeah the fight works but it's got to be it's it's got to be more to it so uh so because his brother lost an eye from a stick and because that's teased several times earlier in the movie so when he's back at the barn doing the unnecessary well not not unnecessary but the scenes were unnecessary but it's necessary for him as a character to train when he was doing that Kelly says, you remember, just get that stick away from him first. And then before, you know, when, when the coach is trying to take him off the ice and he's like, come on, you know, the game's over. Let's go. I, I really saw the performance. I like it. It's like kind of saying like, I know you're not a fighter. Just, you know, we won. That's good enough. Like the coach saying, I accept you for being like a guy who can't fight and just can score. And then it's a nice moment. It's like, you know, he's not pushing him out there. Like the bombers coach He's like, get out there, go, go kill him. Go moiter him. You know, he has that little, um, that little uh like kind of racing for me always has like you know like this like oh like he's betting on horses hey rocky go off there take his legs out you know go put him on the ice kill him kill him just so I, I, I just Dora. yeah and so I, I just like how the i like how the mustangs coach is like more human and just like more of a good guy where he's like i'm tough i'm going to push you to the limit and beyond but it's like we won like you don't need to go out there and get killed just come on it was just, it was nice and so um but he says get like watch a stick or something so like a couple times it's teased like watch so I, I i don't mind that it's in there because it's like it's set up and it's like wow rocky doesn't give a shit he's good i would just think that rocky knows he can take him so he just but he, he's clearly going for more so i don't know I, I don't mind that it's it's ramped up but it fits to me. So I'm going to put my writer's director's hat on just just uh, uh, an alternative is we drop the whole jousting stick scene we still do come full circle with the eye have a brief moment earlier in the period where he swipes uh racky swipes a stick at his eye and we have like a slow-mo of fucking rob low dodging out of it oh i got my eye and then yeah. when they go toe to toe at the ice what did we do as kids all the time sometimes when we're trying to pop the uh the, the who's ever got possession of the puck we'll fucking smack the stick out of their fucking hands to try to you know let's just do that let's just fucking right out the jump anyway it doesn't fucking matter because right. they square off and before you know it we got two swordsmen standing at center ice <laughs> <laughs> I challenge you, sir, to yeah. a hockey fight. Yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. Let's go ahead. Let's do this. Uh, yeah, you're right. Should we wait for the bell? No, we shouldn't wait for the bell. Then, all right. So <laughs> it, um, um, so they they fight. They fight. At, it wouldn't you know it? Fucking Dean gets his stick out of his hands, and now we got ourselves a fair fight. But you know, Dean's not going down without swinging because he just went and trained for two years or two days. We don't know, but he just went and trained his fucking ass off. He put in five hours of hitting a heavy bag with his older brother standing next to him. Yeah. And only, on. and only three off. hours of that was spent on the farm. And the other two hours was, was fighting. Yeah. But uh, dad, I have to become an excellent fighter. You need to still do your farm chores. Yeah. After after you after you uh, bail this hey, then then I'll fucking let you go. Then punch. Um, first bail, then punch. Yep. 
And wouldn't you know, fucking Dean knows how to fucking fight. And Dean cleans Racky Racky's clock. Cleans Probably one of the clock. least believable parts of this movie is them in a fair fight, squaring off and Racky losing. Like what? Okay, so his father taught him about pulling the jersey over. He used that. But it's like Racky went from winning to losing real quick. He got in some real initial quick. shots. Yeah. And then all of a sudden he loses his rackiness and now he's getting punched in the stomach a couple of times and his jersey's being pulled over and he looks stunned. It's like that guy can take a punch. But all of a sudden in the scene, because the movie has to end on that note. So I, I'm sorry, I'm not believing it. it. It's a nice moment because you as an audience are rooting for that to happen because he's such a bad guy. He took out the leader of the team. He messed up Rob Lowe's smile. He's done like really bad things throughout. So there's really no likability to him. Although as mentioned earlier, he was humanized. He's not just like, um, just like a soulless force of evil. He he's, he's a, he's a, he's a character. He has some dimensions to him, but you want him to lose. It's okay. You know, uh, I don't I mind heard- seeing that. I heard the only reason Racky lost is he was up real late the night before blow hookers, the whole nine. And he just wasn't, he, he was, he was taking the Mustangs lightly. Is what I, is that what I read. Thunder what the, Bay lifestyle, but the Thunder Bay nightlife takes another victim. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Women yeah. of Thunder Bay. <laughs> another victim. Uh, do we, do we need to say anything more on this film? Do you think? Yes, we do. Because okay. it turns into a psychological thriller at the end. Did you not catch that? uh no okay no, so at the end of the scene <laughs> uh, i'm sorry scene at the very end of the movie the final scene is rob Lowe is in cowboy boots walking on the ice okay um because you know he's doing the thing where like you know you walk out onto the field and you like take it all in and you like kind of like envision what you replay it in your mind it's part of your vision quest so um then kids are there with programs and sticks and like not skates like what are they doing there is that did they have a youth hockey league? And then, then they were in the locker room and they're before they go home, they were just going to walk around the ice and sneakers. It just, they, they put it there because they're establishing Dean Youngblood as a burgeoning celebrity. And this is what he's going to see more of in the NHL, but it completely doesn't make any sense. Where are their parents? Why are they there? The, the arena is empty. And if they were playing in a league, wouldn't they have like gear on it? would make It would make more sense if those kids had on hockey gear and they were like, walk, they were crossing the tunnel and they're like, oh, hey, isn't that Dean Youngblood? And they run out to him. Okay, makes a bit more sense. Still weird, but that's not as weird as the very end of the movie when it turns into a horror movie. Okay. You know where I'm going with this? I think I do. And in fact, the end of the movie, uh, it, the credits are rolling right now. I'm going to watch this as you explain it. Okay, so he's signing the autographs right now. Dark rink, where are the parents? Where are the fucking parents? <clears throat> so, but that that's not the horrific part. I mean, that's just weird and like, okay, okay, producers, you want to throw in some autograph seeking kids because we got to make him a star. This has got to be a star. He's got to be a stud in the star. You got to have, gotta have a guy don't, and do a cake. So don't tell me. I'm just going to let this roll. I'm going to see if I can't pick it out. Don't worry, audience. I'm not going to have any dead air, but I'm, I'm curious if I can. Oh, that's right. This DVD. So after the kids leave, he yep. has his final conversation with yep. Jesse, yep. which is like kind of tying a bow on top of the movie because he's established himself as a badass as a scorer as a brother as a son but is he a lover so the last element to be you know uh taken care of would be the love story because that's in limbo jesse comes back and actually when he first goes onto the ice and she's walking uh on the other side of the plexiglass and he passes her and he kind of bangs his uh stick on and she kind of, I, I, I kind of like that moment. Like the hero has returned. I think that was a really sweet moment. That was nice, you know? And then he goes up, she goes up into the stands. And when he, when Chadwick doesn't put him in initially, he finally does. And she yells to him, it's about time, Chadwick. And then he's like, who's Cringe. that? She, oh my God, it's my daughter. You know, <laughs> who's it? like, I, I like things like that. It's, it's, it's like, it's sweet. You know, she's ribbing him and he's like, oh, okay, I know I was being a jerk, but. So and I think I missed it again, man. They just walked off the ice. We did. Okay, so okay, so, you're, so let me let me help you out here. So okay. here's what happened. So okay, so they're kind of talking about like you know. So I guess you're going to be a hockey player after all. And then he's like, yeah. And then she's like, well, I guess I can accept that. And and then she says, let me see if I wrote it down the verbatim. Uh, okay, yeah. And I wrote down last line cuckoo. She says, um, <clears throat> she says like it's cool that you're going to be a hockey player. I love you anyway. How long have they known each other? 
This is like a three week relationship and she's already a clinger. She's I don't a stage even, four clinger. I wouldn't even say it's three weeks, dude. Like to me, you could make even worse. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, but you don't need to put that in there because now she's insane and he has a stalker. So he needs to get the fuck out of Hamilton. Like Vince Vaughn needed to get off that island. You know what you just reminded me of? So what you're saying is she, uh, was it Patrick Mahomes or whatever, where you have the, whatever it was a signing, it was a draft day picture and you have this horrible woman like, doing this as as they're celebrating i can't remember mm-hmm. if it's patrick mahomes i can't remember if it's joe burrow i can't remember which quarterback it was but they got signed and their girlfriend at the time which okay. i i'm pretty sure that they're not together anymore she looks insane like she just won the jackpot too i think you're right like uh 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 jesse thinks she just won the, the jackpot like he's going to the pros. I'm going to have to I, better, better get my love hooks on him like right away and like get married. And like, this is like his first girlfriend. <laughs> like, yeah. Before that, it was just a cow. I mean, come on. It was Miss McGill. And yeah. And whatever was on the farm. I mean, whatever this, was available. That's right. So, yeah. So I, to me, it's like, oh man, you just, uh, why you, you don't need the kids. Okay. I get it. It would have been better if he was like walking outside the rink, but then it's too cumbersome to do that and have them on the ice with that like final kind of embrace moment. And they can't kiss because he's all like bruised up and his t- teeth nerves are hanging out. So yeah, so it's it's like, that's kind of sweet, but it's like, you just don't need the last line. You, why? Cut that out. Just have them, just have them like hug or kiss her and then they walk off the ice. Like they do, just don't, don't include the line. I love you anyway. You haven't, you don't know who this person is. Bro, you know he's a have- hockey player yeah exactly that's what i was gonna say bro we could have just after the fight was over we could have did an 80s ending where we just freeze frame on he's Rob on the shoulders Lowe. yeah smiling face missing the tooth and he's won the big game he's there won the go. big game there there everyone is but hey the producers wanted the love story the studio wanted the love story we get it but you know okay. even even with it you know you can just you don't need to have her say i love you after knowing him for like 72 hours it's just like it's a little they're kids they're young i mean young love i get that but do you not believe in love at first sight seth <laughs> lust at yeah. first sight oh yes. yeah you're right you're right yeah you're right um yeah uh so that was minor point but like why do you turn it into a psychological thriller in the very last second <laughs> that would have been funny as they were walking off the ice you turn to a close-up of rob Lowe and he kind of like <laughs> you know wow, wow turns towards the camera where he's like, oh yeah or better yet what are you gonna do wait a minute am i right yeah i guess i'm fucked <laughs> but at least i'm a pro hockey player now yeah yeah so there you have it there you have young blood three hours of young blood and i i'm gonna be honest the Let's movie was 90 minutes or yeah. review if it was twice as long yeah, exactly. But let's be honest, though, it doesn't, talk about. it doesn't feel like three hours. It didn't feel like three hours to me. I feel like I've been sitting oh. here for maybe 45 at the most. I mean, even my ass I is feel like hurt. it was a breakaway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. With no trip ups at well, I guess the time the, the me setting it for two hours was a was a uh, a trip up. But Seth, um, Brian loves you. Take out Tubi. And you didn't need to come on here and, and chat with me about young blood, but I appreciate you, my friend. And like, I, I, I'll just, I'll put you on the spot. So everybody has to hear your answer. I say, we do something like this again. I, oh, I, totally. I, I yeah. really do like in, in, and I was actually thinking about it for, for this one. And I'm going to wind it down here. Cause I, I actually, I think my, the audio version is set to cut out at three hours and we're at two fifty eight on the nose. So, oh boy. um, I will say this. I almost turned this into a watch along with you. I, I was curious if that would be something that you'd be interested in doing down the line where yeah, we actually sure. do do a, a, a watch along, but um, yep. you can see Seth's movies on Tubi right now and that shit's free. So I don't want to hear any fucking excuses. Zero. And um, they're worth your time. I mean, if you look right here and if you guys are real super fans and you look right here, he's Seth, Seth has entered my home. And, and I, <laughs> bro, I, I mean, fan, fan to friend, my, my dude, fan to friend. So I hope you'll uh, come back. And uh, this, this was, who knew that young blood needed a three hour podcast, but God damn it. 
we made sure that it we did it yeah we did it seth thank you for joining us i'm gonna give you the peace sign and thank uh, you good times Appreciate yeah it. man yeah man we will talk soon all right sounds good Have all good right one. you too man you too all right we're gonna get seth out of here and uh how about that music all right three hours of young blood i can almost say nobody is doing that Nobody has done a three-hour podcast on Young Blood, but here's the thing: you guys learned something, no doubt in my mind. Ellis Cinema, Seth Landau. You can find me wherever you do your podcast. Seth Landau is all over social media, Instagram and Twitter. But make sure you go stream his fucking films, and then after you stream his films, hit play again so you can get the views. Ellis Cinema, Seth Landau, Young Blood, 1986. We gone. <laughs> Yeah.